So today we are going to be um, discussing a topic entitled, or the title I gave it is, and yet he is God. Amen. And yet he's God. Amen. So this is just going to be really quick and I just hope you guys are inspired by this word today. If you are, please consider subscribing and please like the video, share it with those that you think would be interested in it and help this channel to grow. It would mean so, so much. So without further ado, let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We ask, Lord, that you would allow your word to go forth and do a work in each and every one of us that will bring forth fruit to salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. So, and yet, he's God. Amen. I don't know if we ever really stop and realize that even though so many things happen, even though we may want to question or doubt or wonder why, God is still God no matter what. We just came through a whole pandemic and some of us were shaken, some of us were strengthened. But no matter what, God is still God. Amen. So today I want to discuss three main points with you. So the first point being, and yet he's still God. He is the only living God. Amen. Somebody say he's the only living God. So in 1 Kings chapter 18, we read about Elijah's Mount Carmel victory. So in this story, I'm just going to very quickly paraphrase it. Elijah goes to a mountain called Mount Carmel um, where he is in confrontation with 450 false prophets. They are worshipers of Baal and there is basically a contest. It is whose God is the real God and it is decided that the God who answers by fire is the true and only God. So Elijah and the prophets um, each take turns, they build an altar, the prophets, the false prophets build their altar, they start um, sacrificing to their false god, cutting themselves, singing, dancing, doing whatever, and it goes from sun up to sundown, and they are desperately trying to get their false god, their fake god, to answer. To the point that they're even cutting themselves, they are just, basically, they've lost it, and they're, they're like grasping at straws, trying to get this false god to answer them. Elijah, on the other hand, says, okay, he builds his altar, he says, dig a trench around the altar, so dig a hole around the altar, and fill the trench with water pours water on the offering and if any of you guys know just the basics of lighting a fire you usually can't light a fire on something that's wet right okay so the whole point is he is negating any possibility that they would say that he did it it would be impossible humanly impossible for him to start a fire a fire great enough to consume an offering on something that's completely drenched so they drench the altar there's water around the altar there's no dryness in sight of his offering and he prays a simple prayer lord show them that you are god you alone are god there's no other god but you all of a sudden boom fire of god falls licks up the water in the trench consumes the offering and everybody's like oh my gosh elijah's god is the one true god he is the only living god dean says these idols that they make they carve a mouth into their face but they can't speak they carve ears but they can't hear they carve eyes for them, but they can't see. So they're just blocks of wood, blocks of stone. And yet these people pray to them and they, they, they worship them and they expect something from this inanimate object. But yet the one true and living God, they do not worship. We see that there's only one true God. The book of Isaiah echoes it over and over in the 40s chapters and in other areas of the book. Um, Constantly, we know Deuteronomy, hero Israel, the Lord our God is one point of that scripture. Now we move on to not only is God the only living God, he's the only loving God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord said it many times. He has signed his word, I love you, over and over and over again. Now it's important on so many levels. Not only is God showing us that he's approachable, that he is accepting, that he offers us unconditional love, love without requiring our works or our deeds, 
love not even requiring our worship. He loves us no matter what. The Bible says that even while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And the Bible also tells us that there's no greater love than that someone would lay their life down for their friend. So we see that while we were yet sinners, we experienced the greatest type of love in that Christ Jesus, the Lord God in flesh would die for us. That is incredible. I have not heard of any other deity, idol, God, who has ever done such a thing for those who worship it, never in all of existence. Now, if that's not a reason to love the Lord, if that's not a reason to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, the one true, almighty, all-powerful God, who loves us enough, sinners enough, so much that he would do something like that, I'm sold. I don't know about you, but I'm still about is that he is the only God that can offer you salvation. Amen. Jesus is the only God who offers salvation, forgiveness of sins, and the indwelling of his spirit. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. So here Jesus is calling us to him, offering us salvation on a silver platter, unrestricted access. Come to me. He put no restrictions on who could come, on when they could come, on how they could come. We now see that we can come to Jesus in any time in any situation, any place we find ourselves, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, we are invited to come to Jesus to receive salvation. Amen. So in coming to him and receiving his salvation, he promises a gift on top of the gift. So he said, not only will he give us rest, but further in his word, he says that once we repent and we are baptized, washing away our sins, that he will fill us with the gift of the Holy Ghost. So it's a gift. So not only are we blessed to have forgiveness of sins, salvation from not only what we face in this current life, but in the life to come, we are also blessed to have his spirit living within us. Now, we will have to have another video discussing the purposes of the Holy Ghost. What you see, please consider subscribing and please like the video. Please share it with someone who you know would be interested. Help our channel to grow uh, to the glory of God. And I will see you in the next video. Take care and God bless. Bye.